Yo, what's up? Uh, there's, there will be one extra video today about Byton. So um, a while ago, Byton, they invited uh, lots of influencers and media press people to have this press conference. Uh, they were going to announce something. Um, and then I couldn't be there, but they offered also a digital press conference or a digital round table with Q&A also. Yes, that's pretty cool, man. Um, and uh, because of coronavirus, then you guys know that um, the um, uh, Geneva Auto Show has been cancelled. So, um, uh, yes, I was planning on going there, but unfortunately, uh, we're not going to go there. Uh, but anyway, so they still had the press conference today. And uh, it was a live stream that was unlisted. And I was under embargo until you guys watch it now. Um, so it's really nice. They have set it up, I have to say. Props to Byton. They did it very nice and professionally executed. Uh, the, the live stream was only delayed by a few minutes. Yes, I watched a live stream from Tesla. That was been several, I don't know how long it was delayed. And people were just waiting there. Come on, it's going to happen now. So, so that was good. Yeah, uh, image quality was crisp and clear. Also, the transmission was pretty good. Re overall, very good quality of the, the audio and video. Um, and then, okay, there was a short introduction first. And then um, there was an announcement from uh, Dr. Andreas Schaff. Schaff, I hope I pronounced it correctly, Chief Customer Officer. And um, he talked about what's going, what's happening with Byton coming up soon. And then there were some Q and A sessions where I can also uh, people could ask questions. Um, so to summarize a little bit here, uh, there will be mainly two waves to Europe. Um, the first wave will come in the end of 2021, um, and uh, the, the the countries included will be Norway, yes, of course, Sweden, Netherlands, France, and Switzerland. Yes, um, I'm a little bit surprised that Sweden was included here because Sweden is usually not an EV-friendly country. But okay, cool enough, yes. All the other countries, though, they are... Well, actually, also France. What the heck? Uh, okay, um, uh, I was thinking, what about um, uh, Belgium? Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, they, uh, Biden, they already found uh, partners. Yes, that's good for first wave. Um, you can see that afterward, by the way. Uh, and then they say that the first store will be, uh, the first Biden store will be in Zurich, in Switzerland. And then by the end of next year, they will have 20 stores throughout all Europe. So also in Oslo, yes. Uh, and then they also say that there will be a second wave coming up about six months after the end. So that would be in the mid 2022 then. Then the rest of Europe will be included. Um, and okay, uh, one thing though, one topic that I was interested in, and I guess also for you guys, is about charging. So uh, they say that Byte will collaborate with digital charging solutions in Germany or from Munich. Uh, so um, I haven't heard of that one again. Uh, I'm probably a noob, uh, but um, it's um, uh, they have. I think it's similar to um, to plug surfing. You guys have heard of a plug surfing, right? So they say that if you ha they're going to use that service charging service and then you will have charging throughout 28 countries and you will have 150,000 charge points so yes that sounds like hubject to me uh, and it's basically just like uh, 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 plug surfing or um, new motion where you can roam between all the charging points in europe actually throughout the world uh, hubject is worldwide uh, and then they say that you will be built via, um, I think the way I understood it, you will be built via Byton. So you just charge, that, they, they want to, to make the whole charging experience as easy as possible. And I really approve that shit, yes. Uh, so uh, you just charge and then I guess you pay Byton and then Byton will pay the, the dig digital charging solution. So. Yeah, that's good. Now, I, I wanted to ask him actually about uh, if if it supports plug and play, but I didn't never got around to ask that one. Uh, and um, uh, they also say transparent and fair pricing. So because my first qu question and probably also what you guys want to know, how much will it cost to charge Byton at Ionity? Uh, I will come back to that. Uh, and also, they also say that um, the car will have some smart route planner that also includes charging stops. So that's nice. And more and more cars nowadays, they have that like the e-tron. Tesla has it. Um, 
EQC, I think also has it. Uh, okay, a little bit, if you guys don't know, um, Byton will come with 22 kilowatt onboard charger. That's pretty awesome, man. Not many cars nowadays come with that. Uh, and also it can support 150 kilowatt DC fast charging. And they say that uh, you can add 100 kilometers of range in 10 minutes. So if we assume the best case 150 kilowatt, that will translate to 250 watt hour per kilometer. So this is a thirsty car, a thirsty SUV. Yeah. Um, and then they also say that if you charge from zero to 80%, uh, it will take 35 minutes. So I'm assuming again that they, they talk about the biggest battery pack, the 95 kilowatt hour. And if you assume that 90% of that battery pack is available energy, um, then uh, it will be 117 kilowatt hours. Actually on, on a second thought, maybe, maybe they have a top buffer. Uh, my gut feeling is they have a top buffer, so maybe the average speed is 110 kilowatt, but that's still pretty kick ass, man. Yeah, uh, and one thing I noticed when I look at the, the presentation they had is that it shows um, the display shows you battery temperature. Uh, as far as I know, only Byton and Porsche Taycan will show you battery temperature. Uh, not even Tesla shows you that. Well, unless you go into Ludicus Plus, but uh, yes, for most people, you don't see battery temperature. I wish we could see that more in other cars. So, yeah. Uh, and also, they mentioned that um, when they are charging, you can watch movies on the big screen. So, you know, this car feels like a Tesla. Yeah. Okay, and uh, now to the QA session. So, they had all this stuff um, first, uh, the presentation, and then they started answering questions. And people could start uh, asking questions already in the live stream. And then also, there were also some people, while well, they open it so, so you can ask questions beforehand, send via mail, uh, or even during the session. Uh, but they seem to prioritize uh, live uh, questions though. So I had two questions, <laughs> but unfortunately none of them were answered. So I don't know really why, um, because I saw that other people also had questions that were totally ignored. Uh, it seems like they um, uh, they randomly pick questions, uh, something, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> uh, they did a mistake. They said 95 kilowatt batteries. I of course I corrected. Um, and I said that no, it's 95 kilowatt hour, but I misspelled battery also. So maybe that's why they're like, ah, oh, that douchebag, we're not gonna answer his questions. <laughs> no, but it was fair. Um, I mean, I, I had questions that I believe you guys wanted to know about, which is that what is the price on Ionity? And also, there was a follow up question from Levinson, and uh, he asked about tow hitch. So, unfortunately, there will not be tow hitch for, uh, for uh, Byton. Uh, so I asked if, uh, what about um, at least towing for accessories like bike, but they never answered that one, which is a bummer because, and also there was a, a question about roof rack that was also not answered. Because, I mean, think about this. It's an SUV. What are people gonna do with, with it? It's all wheel drive also, you know? They will have similar use case, uh, like uh, e-tron e users, iPace. Tesla, which is that they will go skiing, they will haul shit, they will put stuff on the roof. Um, so my my feeling about the Byton is that it's a glorified, um, was again soccer mom, city car. Um, uh, you you want to be able to put shit in the back, put shit on the top, and and use it for whatever. You know, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but. Yeah, so I, I hope they will reconsider it. I mean, Jaguar did that, you know. You know that in the early days, Jaguar, they said that, eh, here's the I-Pace, and then, and then uh, the Norwegian uh, EV Association, they said, hey, do you guys have tow hitch? And they were like, Jaguar were like, N -n no, uh, nobody wants that. Uh, and the EV Association was like, uh, yes, they want it. Uh, Jaguar was like, no, 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 no. So they did a survey in Norway and lots and lots of people, Norwegians, agreed that you we want tow hitch. And then they, they came back to Jaguar and said, here go, lots of people want it. Jaguar like, uh, okay, yeah. So today they have tow hitch, but the, the I-Pace, the whole frame hasn't been designed to pull heavy load unlike the I, uh, unlike the e-tron and the EQC and the Model X. So the I-Pace can only support 750 kilos, unfortunately. Um, but uh, anyway, I wish car manufacturer would listen to audience to 
to potential buyers and also to influencers when they design cars. If Biden asked me, hey, what is important in an EV? This size, this, you know, whatever range, battery? I would say get that damn tow hitch in there, yes. Okay, anyway, I'm just, uh, I'm just a slob, an influencer, so I have no uh, voice here anyway. But <laughs> anyway, so um, I think I will just end this by showing you guys the whole session. And then you can just watch it because um, I don't know what else I, I should say about it. Um, but you can just watch the whole thing. And you know what I'm going to do? I will. Um, you can look in the description below. I will link to each, each section and each question. And you can just click on it and then you can see what you're interested in. Yes, because some of these answers, to me, it sounds like a little bit too long. Uh, they should have compacted it. it should, should at least should just answer it shorter and then just go through more questions. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you for watching and talk to you later and enjoy the Q&A. Well, enjoy the whole, uh, uh, once again, uh, digital round table. Yes, it's Corona free. <laughs> yes. On daily commutes with my car, I use my smartphone every day. I stream my music and I let the navigation run through my smart device. I believe this is also true for most of you today in the audience. The Byte and M Byte is the solution for all of us who want their electric vehicle to be intelligent and connected. I'm Maria Molody from the Byte and PR team in Europe, and we are very happy to, uh, to welcome you today to the first ever digital roundtable here from Munich. As you can see, we are here streaming from the Munich Design Studio. We are preparing the market launch in Europe and you might hear some voices from our colleagues who are working today. Apologies for that in advance. Today, we want to present to you how and when the Mbyte will come to the European market. Our CCO, Dr. Andreas Schaaf, will tell you everything you need to know, just in a few moments. Some of you in the audience have already submitted some questions to us beforehand, but please feel free to continue asking us anything you like in the live chat on the right side of this video. Or you can also send us your questions to the email address eu.pr at byton.com. After Andrea's presentation, we will have a live Q&A session, so stay tuned. Now, Byton CEO, Dr. Daniel Kirchert, has some words for you from Hong Kong. Dear Byton fans, firstly, thanks a lot for your great passion and trust in us. And I'm very excited that we are uh, seeing such a great feedback for the Byton M Byte from our European uh, fans. And uh, especially after Frankfurt Motor Show and also the CS Las Vegas recently, we see really great feedback for our production car. The reservation numbers have been going up and today we are also very happy that we can share some more news with you when and how the Mbyte will come to you and uh, we will uh, getting more and more great retail partners and I want to invite my friend Andreas to tell you a bit more details uh, about how we're gonna launch our car in the European market. Thank you Daniel. And now, without further ado, I want to introduce you to our Chief Customer Officer, Dr. Andreas Schaaf. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Maria. Thank you very much. You did a perfect introduction, and I like your dress that you're wearing today. Hey, uh, great welcome from uh, Byton here from the Munich Design Studio. It's great to have all of you here uh, live attending our digital press conference. And I have to say, uh, originally we planned to be in Geneva, but I think because of the coronavirus, uh, it wouldn't have made much sense. So uh, that's why we are now digital, uh, not in a classical format, and here out of our design center in Munich. Biden is certainly really on a very high speed uh, ride. And just to recap a little bit where we started, uh, founded in 2016 uh, on a global, global stage, and then the brand got introduced at IAA in 2017. The Nbyte concept, and that was the first time when we uh, were able to demonstrate what we really have in mind when we are talking about a platform for life and a smart device on wheels, was our 
uh, CES introduction in 2018. And the EU premiere followed shortly afterwards in April 2018. And the start of the prototype production also in April 2018. And we were extremely proud when we were able to found our headquarters in Nanjing and moved into our headquarters in Nanjing. And all of this happened also in 2018 in June. And then the first time really uh, when uh, the series production interior was shown. So one of the really the highlights of the product was the CES 2019. The entire Mbyte in the final production state was presented at IAA 2019. And we started this series production, the pre-production shortly afterwards in October 2019. CES this year, 2020, we were able to demonstrate what we really mean by a digital living room, a digital experience, our revolutionary uh, bite and stage. And we demonstrated to the world what it meant by uh, presenting a first wave of uh, content partnerships uh, on CES 2020. So you see this is, a, this is a relatively short period of time. We're extremely proud on what the team has come up until now. But today, I think it is time to talk about Europe. That's why we are here today. So our market forecast for Europe says that the EV market in Europe is experiencing a really rapid growth over the next year. So actually, until 2025, we think that the share of EVs out of the total market will grow from today 2% to 13% in 2025. And if you take a look at China, North America, and Europe all together, and we will talk about 7.7 .7 million electric vehicles in 2025. And I think this is a truly impressive number. And if you look Europe out of those 7.7 .7 million, then Europe will contribute 2.8 million out of the 7.7. Uh, .7. So you immediately see that Europe is a very, very strong driver for the electrification. And the good news is that out of those European EV share, over 700,000 cars will be purely premium electric vehicles. And that is the core segment uh, of the Byton m -byte. The number of EV charging points in Europe will reach almost 200,000 very, very soon. And this is a really important uh, parameter because the charging infrastructure is a prerequisite, of course, to drive an electric vehicle. So all in all, there is a huge potential for EVs and certainly for Biden here in Europe. So how do we plan to step into the European market? We have 65,000 reservations worldwide, and out of which are over 25,000 reservations from Europe. And our focus is truly a premium customer experience in sales and in service. And for sales, we are really talking about a fully exclusive Byton approach. No compromises at all. For service, we collaborate with very, very strong partners. And they already have an existing infrastructure. And that means that there is an existing, that there are existing facilities, and there is a logistic system in place for service and spare parts distribution. Of course, on top of the infrastructure of our partners, we will also offer, of course, very modern and innovative solutions for service, such as mobile service, pickup service, drop service, and many more. And all in all, I think this is a huge benefit and truly a customer, a truly an experience, a premium experience for Biden customers. So it is really the combination of exclus exclusivity, and at the same time, it is about experience of existing well-established retail partners. So let me show you what that really means in concrete terms. You all know we have already signed MOUs in multiple European markets. The first wave of Biden markets in Europe are Norway, 
Sweden, France, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Germany. And we are here today to announce the first four concrete partners in Europe. And those are Hedin Automotive for Biden in Norway and Sweden. Hedin has already 125 facilities in Sweden, Norway, Belgium and Switzerland, in which nearly 32 car brands are represented. Laumann Group for Biden in the Netherlands, one of the largest automotive distributors in Europe. The Dutch family-owned group consists of 69 self-owned outlets and service points for various brands. Buy My Car for Biden in France. With almost 80,000 vehicles sold annually, Buy My Car is one of France's leading car distribution group with 83 car dealerships all over France. Modern Driving for Biden in Switzerland. 40 dedicated service outlets, seven test drive centers, and two mobile pop-up stores. Modern Driving will also be the first European retail partner for Biden's first flagship store. Yes, we will open the first Biden place in Switzerland. And we will open that European flagship store in the second quarter of 2021 in a very unique city and city concept, which is called The Circle. And it is a multi-purpose complex within the airport of Zurich. So, in totality, around 20 Biden places in top locations in Europe until 2021. Let's change a little bit the perspective. How does the Biden Embite customer experience look like? We created very early two main touch points the Biden website and the Biden app. And if you open the Biden uh, visualizer, you can already experience key configuration options. There are eight different exterior colors. There are five wheels with up to 22 inch. There are different interior moods. And there are three seater bench or captain chairs in the back. And our famous 10 degree inwards rotating seat which we call the Biden Orbiters. We have a hybrid sales model. So online plus offline really stands next to each other. And we have several touch points for our customers. We have the app and the website. We have the retail partners with concrete Biden places in perfect locations. And of course, very important, the customer experience center for setting function and calling function. So everything connected with your individual Byton ID. We open pre-orders in Europe in the second half of 2020 with a down payment of 500 euros. And the reservation holders today already, they will have a priority time frame for placing their pre-orders. In your daily life, with an electric vehicle, charging experience is essential for your mobility needs. And that's why Byton collaborates with Digital Charging Solution, short DCS, based out of Munich in Germany. DCS is the leading European e-mobility service provider, and we are very, very happy to have signed a partnership with them. This will allow Byton customers a guarantee to access to major charging networks in 28 European countries with more than 150,000 AC and DC charging points. Access to charging stations of over 450 major charge point operators, such as Ionity, Fastnet, Allego, Energy, New Motion, EasyVia, Swiss Charge, and local utilities. This is already a great customer benefit, but we offer much more. 
In Byton, it is all about the fully integrated public charge control via Byton app and Byton stage display. Cashless payment via Byton ID or an RFID card with one contract and only one bill. Transparent and fair pricing. The pricing is determined by charge point operators and smart route planner with charging station recommendations will help customers to find the best charging station along the route. And when we talk about the Byton M Byte, we talk about a premium SUV, which will be available in different powertrain and battery configurations. The entry level model with 72 kilowatt hours battery and rear mounted electric motor, peak output of 200 kilowatt in the range of up to 360 kilometers in range on a WLTP cycle. The four-wheel drive high-performance configuration of 300 kilowatts, equipped with a 95 kilowatt battery, is designed for a possible range of 435 kilometers. And the two-wheel drive version even goes up to 460 kilometers. And thanks to the very competitive charging capabilities, we can reduce waiting time to a minimum. You can charge the 95 kilowatt version in a typical home charging scenario with up to 22 kilowatts and the DC fast charging with up to 150 kilowatts, 100 kilometers of range in about 10 minutes or from zero to 80 percentage of the battery in around 35 minutes. So let's see what that means for a long travel trip. Although we are here in Munich today, we start our trip in Geneva and we drive from Geneva to our design studio in Munich. So we, <clears throat> we start first, uh, of course, in entering the destination in, our, uh, in the app or also on the screen. And thanks to the smart routing, now you can basically choose two different uh, options. You can, you, can choose, um, you can choose two different options. And you see that there are three different charging points. So basically there is a suggestion of two DC fast chargers on the way, or there is also a charging, um, a charging point in the inner city in Zurich. So the stop in Zurich would be ideal, of course, because you could have a coffee or whatever. But um, we actually, I think we actually choose the fast charging on the motorway. And this uh, will bring the battery from the 20% to the 90% in only 33 minutes. Now, we can actually use uh, this waiting time for anything, you know, the typical, the typical um, activities, you know, a snack or a bathroom visit, but you can also use, of course, the unique Byton uh, UE UX uh, experience in our, um, in our, from our Byton stage. So, and that means actually video conferencing, or meditation, or checking health data for, um, on your personal uh, Byton stage. And thanks to our uh, partnerships with Viacom, CBS, and Access, yeah, you can use, you have a bandwidth of a huge entertainment formats. And I think what we will do is, because our kids uh, love to have that, we will actually pick a funny uh, episode of SpongeBob, and we will truly enjoy this um, to see uh, SpongeBob in the car. At least the kids will do so. So this is a truly seamlessly connected in-car experience. And this is what we mean when we talk about the M-Byte as a smart device on wheels. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, let me summarize quickly our news from today. Byton collaborate, collaborates with strong partners in Europe for A, a premium sales and service experience, and B, for a premium charging experience. And the start of the pre-order for the Byton m -Byte will be in the second half of 2020, with a refundable down payment of 500 euros. The first Byton place will open in the second quarter in 2021 in Zurich. And until end of 21, we will have around 20 Biden places in Europe. Thank you very much for following us today here in our digital uh, press conference. And now I'm really looking forward 
to your questions. Thank you, Andreas, for the great presentation and releasing all these news to the media today. So, as I just mentioned earlier, you've already submitted a couple of questions and we have also some questions received in the comments. So, just let's start with the first one, which comes from Norway. Mr. Levinson wants to know what will the price be in Norway? Oh, so the, the very good news with the price uh, is uh, that we have a, a universal price across all Europe for Europe um, and that is a net price of course because local taxation and subsidies uh, is all different uh, so that's why the good news is that the net price in Norway is the same as the net price in the Netherlands or in uh, Germany and it's going to be 45,000 euros plus you know your local tax and subsidies. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Same Which question. Is a great price. Yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> so, um, Mr. Levinson has a couple of more questions. Um, will the M byte have a tau hitch? Oh, I love this question. You know, the tau hitch. Whenever I have interaction with Norwegian customers, um, the question about the tau hitch comes up. Uh, because it's so important for uh, Norwegians, of course. Unfortunately, we have not considered a towage. And the reason for it is that we really had to prioritize, you know, where to put the money on. And, we, and you need a different technical structure, of course, with the towage. So we thought that the digital experience for Byton uh, is really key. Uh, and that's why, unfortunately, we couldn't um, incorporate the towage. It doesn't mean that this might not happen over time, but unfortunately not at the beginning. Correct. Thanks. Thanks for answering. Um, we have another question from the UK from Mrs. Lampinen, who wants to know uh, who is the target Byton customer? Yeah, this is actually a great question, the target customer for Byton. I would say, um, I would say it's certainly uh, a, the target customer is certainly a person that really loves to experience a digital, a, a totally new digital experience, which uh, you don't get in any other car. And uh, what happens very often to me is uh, you are used to seamless connectivity with your phone, uh, but then somehow you enter into the car and you find it in a separate world. You know, it, the, some of the functionality is there, but essentially it's a separate world. So in Byton's Byton stage is is all about the seamless connectivity. You know, we call it the smart device on wheels because we really want to deliver this unique experience that you usually have on your phone in, in a car. So, and that's why I think it's so revolutionary. So the target customer most likely is somebody who really appreciates this, who is very focused on having this connectivity. For them, connectivity is key. I would not think that um, in terms of connectivity and driving, that there is a strong contradiction yeah, I think still people love to drive our car because it drives beautifully. It's a perfect electric vehicle, a perfect ride, very comfortable and in super great turning circles. So it's very uh, um, easy to use also in inner city. Right? So all in all, I think people that really are thrilled with the connectivity. Thanks. Regardless the age That's or right. gender That's or right. whatever. Of course. <laughs> we are very inclusive on everything. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Another question from the UK. Mr. Windsor wants to know, does Byton intend to have its own branded charging solution? And if so, how will this be achieved? Yeah, I think for the charging solution. So when we started to think about it, we always uh, said um, we don't really want to build up additional charging um, infrastructure. You think with the 200,000 charging piles that we are having in, in Europe, um, that it doesn't really make much sense to focus on building up a second, a second network and charging stations. Um, but the important point is where we wanted to focus on is, of course, um, everything that has to do with the experience of charging. Uh, and the experience of charging today is uh, it's a pretty heterogeneous market in Europe, uh, multiple charge point operators. Uh, you have different pricing modalities, you need have different billing. Um, so that makes it uh, even finding the location yeah, and getting the dynamic information about it or reserving it is uh, pretty difficult and challenging sometimes. So that's why we really wanted to focus on the experience of charging. And that means fully integration on your Byton stage and on your, uh, and on your app, which is very important. Uh, and one billing, you know, not different partners. There's only one partner, this Byton and this your Byton ID. And with your Byton ID, you can basically charge them anywhere uh, and you just pay through the Byton ID. Yeah, that sounds convenient. Um, Mr. Blau, Sorry. Yeah. and to add to this, <laughs> nevertheless, we will have some charge points, of course, you know, which we will add. 
at our dealerships and some of the uh, really what we call lighthouse uh, mm -hmm. locations uh, where we want the Biden brand to be present. Mm -hmm. Got it. Awesome. So Mr. Blaubor from Sweden wants to know if the cars will be exactly the same across all of Europe and how far does the configuration go? Yeah, I, uh, it's actually identical across whole Europe. Uh, there's no difference. And uh, the configuration, you will have a, a wide variety of different configuration um, uh, possibilities. So the current plan um, might still um, be changed a little bit, but essentially there are three different trim lines, uh, which gives you already a certain di different uh, differentiation in, in content. And then you have eight colors, exterior, you have different uh, rims, uh, you have different interior, uh, um, uh, interior uh, materials. So all in all, if I look at it, I think it is a truly premium car, a very beautiful execution, uh, very sophisticated materials. And at the same time, I feel that this is a very modern appearance of the car. So you really have a lot of individual possibilities to individualize, uh, but uh, all, of the, all of the options are really, truly a premium execution. Mm -hmm. All right. So we have another question from the UK. Um, how many European pre-orders do you have? Yeah, for Europe. So, so Europe is, is um, I mean, Europe is really amazing because if you look in Europe, when we started uh, in 2016, nobody really had, uh, a Biden really had Europe not really on their, in their key focus. You know, in 2016, Europe was about basically to start this development. Well, some of the European markets were much, uh, of course, you know, like the Scandinavia were, were much uh, ahead of this. But what really happened over the last year is that you see Europe, um, Europe being one of those pacemakers also for electrification. It's uh, amazing. So you see out of our reservations, you know, 25, almost 26,000 reservations are out of, uh, out of Europe. So it's, uh, it's almost half you know, of mm -hmm. the reservations we got. Mm -hmm. So I predict uh, Europe to be really a strong pacemaker. I mean, we talked about this before, over 700,000 EV premium cars in Europe in 2025. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that the number for Biden will be significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that brings me to the next question, which I assume comes from Germany. Mrs. Petzinger wants to know, what are the, f what are the first production run volumes in Europe? Oh, well, this is a, this is a, uh, well, this is a question that really goes into detail. Um, the first, so uh, let, me, let me try to answer this uh, as follows. I think that uh, Europe, so we will start selling the car in Europe end of next year. And uh, I cannot, a share now what's the exact ramp up curve you know in terms of volume available from what i think is because by then we have full production processes in full swing um, that most likely it will be from a company point of view much easier to cover the european quantity and volume because i expect a huge demand and we will basically be able to step by step then serve the demand mm -hmm. so it could be that there are waiting times mm -hmm. got it all right, because Mrs. Petzinger has another follow-up question. Is there any expected impact from coronavirus if it continues into Q2 on getting the car to the market? Yeah, I, I mean, this is a very serious question um, because the coronavirus, of course, has, uh, has an impact on operations. I mean, we see this, uh, we see this now everywhere. We see uh, logistic chains and supplier structures and manufacturing sites. You know, all of them are, of course, impacted from coronavirus. So when it comes to Biden, we haven't really done our assessment yet and f to a full extent. We still need to basically check. Uh, we started on a small scale um, we started our work and operations in the plant in Nanjing, but I do have to admit that, of course, there is an impact on it, you know, mm -hmm. but I can't really quantify it um, today. Yeah. All right. We have a follow up question also from uh, Mr. Blauber, who is from the Netherlands. Apologies. Um, so who do you consider your biggest competitors? Is it Tesla or and or also the traditional car manufacturers? Yeah, I mean, for, I mean, first of all, of course, you know, there is no other product, I think, out there um, as the Biden. I mean, we really, truly think that this is an uh, entirely new um, category of product in the sense of there's nothing out there that really puts the full focus on the digital experience. Um, but having said this, of course, you know, these are people that most likely are sitting in other product, uh, cars today or are deciding perhaps to buy this car in addition to their existing ones. So first of all, I think we look at all of them, 
Yeah. If I look really very seriously in, you know, who gives direction, who is a uh, source of inspiration, yeah, who do you really need to, you need to look at, then we would look, of course, at a Tesla. Mm -hmm. yeah, because uh, I think, you know, what the company has achieved over the last years is, is, uh, is very impressive. And we really want uh, to understand all the details of their operations and basically avoid their mistakes and make things better than what they have done. Mm -hmm. Got it. So we have another question from Norway. Mr. Nibbil Tester, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, when can the first customer in Norway expect to pick up their Byton M Byte? End of next year. End of next year. That's very clear. <laughs> in Oslo. Cool. <laughs> in a very nice facility at a very good location. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can also decide off basically like a home delivery, you know. Mm -hmm. That's right, but, yes. uh, So there are plenty of ways on how to order your car. Uh, that gives me a chance to talk about the online-offline transition, which I think is pretty cool. Because in most industries, you really, the people are really struggling with the merge of online and offline. It's mm -hmm. not only in the car industry. In the car industry, actually, there's very, very limited uh, number of great examples, you know, on how that works. Um, Usually the, the difficulty between the online and offline um, integration is that, that it's very difficult to combine both worlds. Uh, in the car industry, <laughs> what happens is if you have, if you have uh, all of your sales allowance and your discounts and all of this, which basically drives customers into many activities before they purchase a car, uh, the, online, the online world usually doesn't allow to offer the same as the offline world. So that's why this is an inherent problem of the system as such. Mm -hmm. So if you eliminate this through a one price policy um, and, and it allows you to have really a, a uniform price, then you can also change between those two, um, those two uh, worlds, between the online and the offline world. Mm -hmm. So this is a great um, advantage. The reason why we are so sure about the price consistency across all channels and across all markets are very easy to understand and totally different than the classical uh, car business. We only work with one partner in one country. Have you ever seen any of the existing premium German premium companies working with one retail distributor in one country? Mm. Like uh, Netherlands with one BMW dealership or, you know, impossible, it will never mm. happen. So we have decided to go with one partner in one country. Mm -hmm. That's already good news. Uh, and then and it's good news because you have consistency. Uh, you just need to pick the right partner. If you don't pick the right partner, you're most likely going to end in a, in a big problem. But if you have the right partner, this is fantastic. And the, second, um, and the second is that we own the car. We have a direct sales model. So if you have a direct sales model, we are selling the car to the end customer. Uh, so we are the owner of the car and we sell it to the end customer. Yes, with the help of very capable agents, you mm -hmm. know, so the Byton store you can walk in with the Byton uh, companions there, you know, they all help you, you know, in your specific need, they can advise you everything, but then the final um, transaction is between Byton and the end customer. So that's why we have also full transparency on the whole entire process. Mm -hmm. So this is a revolution in the car industry, it mm has -hmm. never been done before. Mm -hmm. All right, excited to... Um launch the invite soon. So we have a follow-up question from Mrs. Lampinen. Will dealerships look into providing EV education for new buyers along the lines of product genius type stuff? Yeah, that's exactly what we have in mind. I think it is absolutely important that, um, yeah, that you're able to provide help and support uh, for customers that are deciding to switch from, an from a combustion engine model into an electric vehicle. So and that's why we know out of the discussion, the research that we did is that you really need to provide also help in, in how to use it. But what we also know is that a lot of people have really concerns in switching to it, but once they experience it, it takes them three, four weeks, you know, and then they are absolutely feel absolutely confident. Yeah, I just had a talk on the weekend with uh, a lady uh, and she um, was switching into an electric vehicle and she said like there's no excuse anymore of not driving an electric vehicle because it is so easy to use, you know. Mm -hmm. I just needed to get used to it and get the confidence, you know, and get used to the planning, you know, and then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to drive an electric vehicle. Yeah. And we need to facilitate this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Mr. Bauer from Denmark wants to know um, when will the Byton launch in UK? 
Oh, the UK. Yeah, the UK uh, is a fantastic market because it has a, a huge potential for electric vehicles. The only issue is that you need to have a right-hand drive vehicle for the UK. Uh, and at this point of time, uh, we, uh, we have planned for it, but we will, it will not be available in the first wave. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. Um, Mr. Winslow has also another question. What bits of hardware on the vehicle can I upgrade over the vehicle's lifetime? For example, cameras, LiDAR, head units, silicon? <laughs> Yeah, this is um, this is a th this is a, a fantastic, great question um, because the whole philosophy of Python is basically the over-the-air upgrades. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if you if you buy uh, um, your phone today, that nobody would expect that this phone that you buy will look exactly identical in two or three years from now. You know, um, so there's a hard hardware piece to this in the car industry, of course. So it's the battery pack. Um, it is, um, of course, the antenna capacity. Um, so there are a lot. It's the lidar sensors. So there are a lot of hardware elements you know, to it, um, which of course needs to incorporate yeah, that you are able to upgrade. Uh, but then everything else is really about the software, mm -hmm. uh, an over-the-air update. You know, mm -hmm. and we can basically update almost all categories of the car. Yeah, the content piece anyhow. Yeah, but also lidar was mentioned. So basically, uh, the um, ADAS features you know will be upgraded. And the car has been spec at the beginning with, uh, yeah, with the full, uh, with a level three uh, capability, uh, because all the sensors are being built in there, um, and you can basically upgrade it over the over the air. Uh, give you an example of the antenna cap capabilities. Um, this is a 4G um, antenna. Uh, it's able to be upgraded to 5G, mm -hmm. uh, but the whole total capacity of the antenna um, is up to 10G. Mm -hmm. uh, so you see that the product has been designed in, in, with the belief of, you know, we need to upgrade it over time. And I do think that this is also the way forward be, because it's, it's, it's exactly the essence of our philosophy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, we call it an ever evolving platform because it's not ready at the beginning. It mm. keeps changing. Yes, that's right. Awesome. So, uh, Mr. Bauer from Denmark, sorry for that, um, was actually asking when will Biden launch to Denmark? Yeah, the Denmark launch. Uh, so, first of all, Biden will be in Denmark. I think that's the good news. Um, second good news is we are already in final negotiation with our partner in Denmark. Uh, and the third one is uh, it will most likely be part of the second wave. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Mr. Blauber from the Netherlands also has a follow-up question. So, uh, would you consider a subscription model like Canoe or Volvo are offering? Yeah, I do think I do think that um, we need uh, some sort of a different ownership model uh, in Europe, especially in Europe. Um, and uh, we are currently looking in all kind of possibilities with partners or without partners. Um, my, and I can't give a final answer to this question today. Uh, he can, you can believe me that um, I'm pushing this topic forward and I'm pretty sure that we will have one alternative ownership model at the start of launch in uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting. Especially for the younger customers, I guess something like like this model would definitely yeah, be I think very so. interesting. I think so, yes. because there are so many of movement these days in this area where people actually really want to uh, use a product without committing for a relatively long period of time. And, uh, and there are many ways on how to offer this these days. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that uh, we will have something. Uh, for me, it is more about also finding the right partner mm -hmm. uh, for uh, Europe. And there are very strong partners in this area. Uh, and if we'll tie up with them, I think we'll have some really cool features. Sounds good. So Mrs. Petzinger is asking what kind of brand awareness or marketing strategy do you have for Europe since this is a new Chinese mm. brand? And she says, I imagine there's a lowish brand awareness outside of the automotive sector. Yeah, I, actually, I think this is really one of the key, um, well, the key challenges, I would call it. Because, I mean, first of all, um, you know, we are building up a brand from scratch. So we don't have this hundred years of, well, knowledge of the brand and people are not aware of it. Um, I do think that people like what most likely she's referring to, like insiders, um, they know us, you know, mm -hmm. by now. I mean, there are so many people, you know, talking about Biden. Biden has been mentioned in the European press over and over and over again. So 
there will be awareness for it, and especially those people that really like to uh, like to get this experience, they 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 will know us, you know, and they will drive the car. Once the car is out there, you know, more and more people will know us. You know, I've seen this in my previous work experience. You know, one of the strongest driver to drive a brand that's not known at the beginning is visibility of the product. You mm. know, the the cars. So we will be out there, and then I'm pretty sure people will see that more and more. But Regardless from this, um, I think essentially what's really interesting is uh, we always call it German engineering and design. We call it uh, the technology of the United States for the digital piece and we call it our manufacturing hub in China. Yeah? So industrialization in China. And that really puts it together. And, and, and people are aware that we have very strong contribution out of all three uh, parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And there's no other manufacturer in the car space, you know, which could claim to have that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is only us. Yeah. And it seems to work perfectly well because when I'm in the United States, people are really proud of the cool um, interface of the car. They think this is awesome, designed in Silicon Valley. Um, and it is awesome. Uh, if you're in Germany, then everybody talks about, you know, uh, the German-Chinese uh, joint venture uh, with all these uh, ex BMW engineers and guys, you know, in the company, which gives people also, of course, trust. We have a fantastic design out of this Munich uh, Ismaning uh, design office uh, with very talented people. And in China, you know, we built the plant in 18 months. Mm. Can you imagine to build a plant in Europe in 18 months? Oh. Well, we will see, you know, what our friends from California will be able to do uh, in, in Germany. But we built this plant in 18 months. This mm. is a plant, you know, most modern plant, 4.0 uh, state manufacturing state of art um, and, uh, and gigantic, mm. you know, up to 300,000 capacity mm. in 18 months. So this is where China is a unique location. Mm. And if you put all of this together, I think you're a truly global brand uh, with different uh, aspects in each individual region. And I think people will buy into this. Yes, definitely. It's a global brand, I would say. So last question comes from Mr. Bauer from Denmark. And he wants to know when will the second wave um, of the launch take place? Yeah, most likely the second. So I like to keep it a little bit flexible because the first wave will already be complex enough, uh, of course. And then most likely the second wave is due uh, six months later than the first wave. Mm -hmm. That's very forward yeah <laughs> great so um this is it this was our q a session for at least today. sorry at least that's sorry. the target for the team in munich now <laughs> okay. they know so six months after the first wave is the target <laughs> great um yeah so for further follow-up questions we will um you can still send us your questions in and we will um come back to you with the with the regarding answers Thank you so much for tuning in today. And last word is for you, Andreas. No, thank you very much. I think this was a great format. I, um, I really uh, appreciate that we had the opportunity to be in touch. And uh, I hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you are equally excited as I am with these great messages um, that we are entering into Europe. And we are entering into Europe at a very fast pace. And I think we're with, with a really convincing uh, model in Europe. So. Uh, stay tuned um, and follow Byton because there's always, of course, something that's going on with our brand. Thank you very much. Thank you.